Hello, we're Team Splat, and we will be designing a harness for balance and reach testing. The members of this design team are Colin Sowers, AJ Stair, Patrick Bevan, Ashley Redkline, Fabrizio Coronado, and myself, Carvel Hollingsworth. The problem we are faced with is that balance begins decreasing for people in their mid-20s and becomes more noticeable on old age, and falls for individuals above six years old are frequently fatal. So Dr. Jay Barton from the VA approached UMD with a project to design a harness for his balance and reach testing that wouldn't interfere with the test parameters so that it can arrest a fall safely without injury, without blocking the motion capture sensors they're using um, to model the body motion to compare young and healthy reach to elderly or injured reach, and then characterize what he described as a human control system, which is the sensory feedback loop in a person so that they can identify the balance weaknesses in individuals for targeted rehabilitation. The first step in this process was defining some of the terms. It's in our report one. We started by getting customer requirements directly from Dr. Jay Barton and Dr. Von Cook. There was a big emphasis on patient comfort just because of our targeted demographic with elderly patients, as well as digestibility and avoiding the sensors as to not interfere with his research. We transferred those into engineering characteristics, which consisted just of quantifying those different CRs. Those included things like uh, time needed to put on and adjust the harness, force applied to patient during fall, and mechanical flexibility on the harness. From there, we talked about our product functions, the main things that our harness and tether need to be able to do. That includes stopping the fall, it needs to be adjustable, needs to be sanitized, and it needs to secure either to the wall or ceiling. And finally, that takes us to our design criteria, what we're judging each of our concepts against. Those include a force supply to patient during fall, weight of harness and tether, mechanical flexibility, strength of harness, and that the harness does not cover sensors. Here we have a flow chart representing the approach we took to choose our final concept. Um, taking all the factors we discussed and putting them through a pew chart in AHP, um, which will be discussed in further detail to create our final concept. To begin our concept development process, we did an in-class assignment where we picked one function as a group, then individually generated concepts for the functions using the 635 method, sharing our concepts between rounds to bounce ideas off each other. For the morphological chart, each member chose the top five concepts for their top three functions and grouping those together to create three possible product concepts. We then selected our top five product concepts as a group from the morphological chart across seven functions. Those seven functions were putting on and adjusting the harness, securing the tether to either the wall or the ceiling, securing the tether to the harness, adjusting the tether, minimizing force and impulse, distributing force and ease of sanitization. Homework four also allowed, also required us to produce uh, more concepts individually. We were asked to name the product function, develop a sketch of the concept and add a title. Altogether, we created 60 concepts, which we narrowed down with the help of the P analysis. Furthermore, for uh, week five, lecture two in class assignment, we divided into two subgroups to create module layouts to configure the best layouts. We evaluated these layouts based on our ECs and CRs. A summary of those results is um, subgroup one had a uh, layout had inflatable padding with carabiner clips and belt buckles. Subgroup two had a tether attached to a movable track and a ceiling mounted motor. Now, all of these methods uh, led us to our final seven functions and top five concepts. So you can see our final seven functions on the left of the screen here and our final top five concepts on the right. Now these uh, final top five concepts needed to be narrowed down even further. So to do that, we used the Pew analysis. So we took each of our top five concepts and we matched them up against other concepts. So we'd use one as a datum and match um, that one up with another specific concept and we'd see if it's better, worse, or the same. And we did that five different times. So we matched every single concept up and got data on every single concept. 
So here's the screenshots for the PIM chart analysis. So as you can see from the top left image, we have one uh, concept one as the datum. And you can see that with concept one matched up with concept two, you have two minuses, meaning it was worse, an S, meaning it was the same, and two pluses, meaning it was better for each of these uh, uh, engineering characteristics. And on the bottom right, you can see a screenshot of tallying up the total number of pluses so that we could um, further narrow down our concepts. So with all of these methods, our, our week four and five in-class assignments, our homework assignments, our Pew analysis, our morphological charts, uh, we eventually could narrow down our concepts to our final top three product concepts. So you can see separated by each column, we have concept one on the furthest to the left, concept two in the middle, and concept three all the way on the right. So for, uh, for the green color system, uh, you can see that those concepts specifically did exceptionally well. Yellow did good, red did neutral, and white did poorly. Now you might notice that there's two uh, white individual concepts in these um, top three concept, uh, product concepts that we chose. The reason for that is compatibility. So although like a white concept might be pretty bad um, by, by itself, synergistically, it might work better for the total product if it is included. Of our five um, design concepts, we uh, ended up going with um, uh, using the AHP chart. We were able to determine the uh, three most critical um, engineering um, uh, characteristics, the um, um, uh, forces applied to the patient during the test, the forces applied to a patient during the fall, and then the, uh, that the harness doesn't cover the sensors. Um, so then with the All right, so, um, and you can see in our um, AHP chart engineering criteria 10 and 9, they have the um, highest weights um, by a wide margin over any of the other uh, uh, engineering characteristics, mostly. So um, when we're going through with um, choosing a concept, we are probably going to use um, either um, concept, uh, we're going to go with engineering concept 10 or engineering concept 9 to be our uh, two most important designs. And um, so when we're comparing the um, concepts to the uh, AHP, um, like uh, compared to the uh, engineering characteristics, um, we can determine that uh, concept two is not um, superior to any, most of the uh, other, in, uh, any of the other concepts in most categories. And you can see in our chart that engineer, um, concept one and concept three are actually relatively um, close across the board in the uh, major engineering characteristics. So the final part of our AHP process was to take the scores we got from the last part and total them with the aggregate weights of each of the engineering, uh, excuse me, the criteria. And so after this, we got concept one with an aggregate weight of 0.43, concept three with an aggregate weight of 0.35, and concept two with an aggregate weight of 0.22. So clearly, just based off this, concept one and three were the best ones. Uh, concept one specifically was propelled by very large advantages in, in EC5 and EC10, uh, while EC concept three was propelled by EC6 and nine. Uh, while not shown on the screen here, we performed the consistency check on this AHP as well. And everything checked out, which made, meant that the results of this were viable and okay to use. So when it comes to the discussion of the AHP, uh, it's important to note that even though the scores between concept one and three were very close, concept three's score was almost inflated. There was almost a false uh, level to it. The motorized aspect, uh, in theory, sounds really good to shorten or lighten the tether and make sure that it accelerate. And this is why the strength of tether slash harness EC was scored so highly. But Upon conversation with Dr. Barton, he recommended we do not include any other control systems in our design due to the feedback with the sensors. So that made pretty much the critical point and what caused e uh, concept three to be so highly weighted, almost not really a thing anyway. Uh, so concept one with the five green boxes as Carvel talked about earlier, it was expected to do well uh, and 
it did grid out pretty well throughout the point of it. So other than the decision criteria, uh, a couple of things we had to consider. Concept one uh, graded out very well in the cleanability aspect of it uh, due to the use of the existing method that Dr. Barton uses with the sanitation spray and wiping down the harness. Uh, with environmental considerations being taken into effect, the plastic covers that are utilized in concept two didn't really make much sense. Uh, and just above all, the physical demographic that this harness is created for needed to be considered. So making sure that no injury resulted as a use of our harness was imperative to your selection. And with all that in mind, concept one was clearly the best choice and is what we move forward with for our, our project. So just to review again, the main features of our first concept, they utilized ladder lock slide adjusters. That's the image at the bottom right. We found that they'd be very easy to use and simple. Carabiner clip attachments from the tether to the harness itself, a hand winch at the wall to adjust the length of the tether, a spring damper system integrated into the tether to just minimize the pressure on the patient in case of a fall, and a cross-strapped harness. And we found that the overall materials will be cleaned with standard disinfectant. So here we have a SolidWorks render as a sketch of our final concept. Um, it shows that the hand winch will be placed on a wall a few feet behind the patient. The room is 20 feet tall, so the wire um, supporting the patient will be stretched over a pulley to be adjusted with the winch and a um, a couple feet above the patient's head, there will be our spring damper system to help reduce the impulse um, connected at the back of the harness um, with a carabiner. Overall, uh, just to discuss the final concept a little bit more, the strength of this design is we found they were easily adjustable in all aspects. That goes directly back to our customer requirement. That's something they wanted. And that includes everything from the harness itself to the tether. It fully supports patients. So just being able to support the entire weight in case of a fall, and it's a very durable design. So Dr. Barton's research will take place over several years, and we wanted to make sure that this was definitely a robust product. In terms of weaknesses, we are a little bit concerned about the cross strapped harness, just because the placement does allow for sensors uh, locations on the back, but adjusting them might take a little bit more time to achieve this effect. It's just something that we're looking forward to focus on in our next design phases. But we found that these were the ideal features to have over our other concepts. And we look forward to begin starting calculations and going deeper into the design of this product. I'd like to thank you guys so much for making it to the end of our presentation report and taking an interest in our project.